No, stay right there. Sure. Stay right there. Uh, I'm, we have... Um, we have pretty much run out of time here. I'm awfully uh, sorry. Uh, Marty Short uh, will be rescheduled next week, and I would like to thank uh, Terry Jones, Carla DeVito also, our announcer Bill Wendell, Paul Schaefer and the band, and uh, the great studio audience. Thank you, folks. You were terrific. Now, uh, Monday, uh, comedian Gary Mulder will be here, and Joey O'Halloran, Miss Subways of New York, 1976. Thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. Good night. Thank you. amazing that's uh unbelievable thank you thank you very much good heavens that i've never seen any thank you very much you you made me feel so warm and uh, i'll tell you what let's do ourselves a favor uh the network was nice enough to give us another half hour here okay so now the least the least we can do here when we leave the studio just kind of clean up after yourself so, so maybe we'll get to use this facility again. Okay? Thank you very much. That's awfully nice of you. Go ahead. Wow. That was pretty darned exciting, huh? Uh, all right, one more interview. My, uh... <laughs> My next guest was a member of the Toronto Second City Company and was featured in such television series as The Associates and I'm a Big Girl Now. He is now the newest cast member of NBC's SCTV network normally seen in this time period and has already made himself a lasting impression for them. And now, would you give a... I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Very impressive uh, example of your work. Uh, terrific, Thank Jerry you, Lewis. Dave. Uh, how did you happen to get this job, the SCTV uh, position? I, uh, well, I'd done Second City for a couple of years with uh, the cast, and I'm just old friends with everybody. Mm -hmm. Is there an audition and involved? 
No, just a phone call. <laughs> they phoned me up and uh, said, you want to do it? And I said, sure, that would be fun. <laughs> uh, you do a lot of impressions. Have you always yeah. done those? Yeah, always. Yeah. But the thing about that show is that you're forced to do impressions that you don't think you can. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and then you see them and you say, aha, I can't. No, but no. sometimes you get the tape and you study it and, and then you sit in makeup and it takes like hours uh, getting, you know, made up for the different people and, and you just kind of start getting the voice and you sit with the tape recorder sometimes and... Uh, yeah, I would guess you're probably the only person alive doing Pierre Trudeau. <laughs> probably not your standard Vegas impression act, uh, Pierre no, Trudeau. No, no, no. And uh, I did Denny Terrio, and it's amazing how uh, few see, people there, do Denny. There, there's, a, there's another one. Yeah. This is uh, probably, mm -hmm. it's, it's not and your And Jerry Lester you'll be seeing. Jerry Lester. And yeah. uh, London Lee, we're very excited about for show seven. <laughs> So these are, it's not like doing John Wayne. These are no, uh, no, really obscure. No, no, this is obscure. not little time with its All right. hits. And you also are a singer, and uh, yeah. we're going to discuss that and other things with Mr. Martin Short. First, we're going away. We'll return more than likely. <laughs> Welcome back. Martin Short is here. Uh, we're talking about your singing career. Yeah. Did you ever actually work seriously as a singer anywhere? Yeah, I used to, um, in the uh, mid-70s in Toronto, I used to go on a show called Everything Goes. It was a kind of a, like, 90-minute variety show hosted by, hosted by Norm Crosby. And uh, it was prime time, and you may be surprised uh, to realize that it didn't succeed that well. Didn't go. Huh? No, it didn't go. Uh, and, but they would have major guests coming in, whoever was playing in town would play, and I would go on and sing, I would be very nervous singing, you know, and w one night I went there and I found out that Tony Bennett was going to be singing, and, and I was, you know, Tony Bennett was like one of my idols and still is, and I was, you know, thinking, God, I can't, f how do you be on the same show as a singer with yeah. Tony Bennett? So they said, don't worry, he's on the beginning of the show, you're on the end of the show. And uh, meanwhile, there was a snowstorm, and uh, he arrived, and Tony sang. He got there about 20 <laughs> minutes late, but he sang his heart out. And uh, he was just, just, forget your troubles, come on, get happy, the Lord is waiting to take your hand. And then, then they said, Tony, wait, I would wait till you get on stage. Uh -huh. That was in the makeup yeah. room, but you see, he's excited. <laughs> he got out, and he's singing and singing, and the crowd is going crazy. And uh, then they say, you're next. And I said, what do you mean, what do you mean, what do you mean? And they said, well, you, you sing the next song. I said, well, you can't follow a singer with a singer. They said, well, watch. So they, so they, set, up, <laughs> they set up my chair downstage while Tony was killing upstage. Yeah. He was, I believe Joanna left me! And just, it just, they're going crazy, and they're setting up my stool down. And I'm, you know, <laughs> this is going to be great, I'm thinking. <laughs> and he finishes, and it cuts back to Norm Crosby, says, Thank you, Tony. And now here's a kid who sings real good, Marty Short. <laughs> and uh, I'm, they cut to me, and I, the music's I'm singing, You and I, Stevie Wonder's You and I. And uh, I'm very nervous, and I, music's starting, da, da, da. And I'm sitting in a, still wearing kind of like a bad sweater. And uh, I say, trying to be funny, I say, gee, what a spot following Tony Bennett. Nothing. Uh -huh. And... Uh, <laughs> And then I think, okay, that's good. And then I start into the song, Here we are on earth together. It's you and me. And already I'm wrong. It's you and I, the lyrics. So, yeah. And then I proceed to forget every lyric and subconsciously break into Tony Bennett's voice while making up lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, so it went something like this. Here we are on earth together. It's you and me. Uh, love was made, it was made in heaven too. And just kind of faded and, and um, was never asked back. It was my last appearance yeah. on, the, uh, no. on the show. No. I understand. You know, you and Paul Schaefer Paul are old Schaefer friends. Paul Schaefer was there that night. Paul and I are very, very old friends. Did Paul advise you in any... Uh... Yeah, he, would, he used to do some of the arrangements for me on that show. And we are old friends. We share a great deal of... Uh, common experiences but also we share a love of frank sinatra right now i have been told that you yeah. do the best impression of frank sinatra in canada that's true yeah. I, do, I do the yeah. Yeah. that's true and uh, who, who would it be in the united states uh the united states uh i would give it to now paul well, joe is good but i would have to say that paul uh -huh. paul is, does is, a good sinatra yeah and and 
You know, so often in our business, man, <laughs> and forget that Paul and I were, uh, you know, playing back gum until 3 a.m., which we were, but let's pretend that we were just meeting today. And this is how two Sinatra fans meet after a distance of time away from each other. You know, Paul, to see you again, it is grand. Hey, Martin, it's a gas for you. <laughs> to be here with us, uh, it's so grand. Well, dare we ring-a-ding the grooving law. Sinatra, I guess, as he is today. As he is today. No, sorry, not. Let's sing a song for all you doves. Just, Just say hello to a brand new world. A world. All right, enough of that. That's right. Uncanny. Here's the pause. We'll be back with Martin Short. Unbelievable. An uncanny likeness. We'll be right back, folks. My heavens. Uh, Martin Short is back, and you just... Uh, I enjoyed you and, uh, and Paul as Frank. Well, thank you. Now, would you have done that if Frank were in the same state? Uh... <laughs> No, 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 absolutely not. Uh, I, I'm intimidated by Frank. Mm -hmm. Some are intimidated by his father. But I find that, that... But, you know, it's funny, and so often, we rarely get a chance to... But that's what love is there for. Yeah, that, you is, see, true. Uh, that is what love is there for. Now, do you, are you honestly intimidated by major yeah, stars? Yeah, horrendous, frightening. Really? I, I've gotten better, but I used to be really pathetic. A couple years ago, uh, about six years ago, I went seeing the royal family here in New York... Uh, uh, and I was sitting at, on second row, and I was by myself, and Catherine Hepburn walked in and sat beside me, and I was like, whoa, Catherine. <laughs> Should I say something? I won't know, maybe. Well, I don't know. Should... No, I won't. No, no. No, no. No, no. So the play starts, and uh, Rosemary Harris is starring, and she's great, and the act one ends with a dramatic diatribe, and she collapses on the ground in emotion. And when I see things by myself, I tend to just, like turned to someone and, and say something, and I turned to Hepburn, forgetting it was Hepburn, and said, isn't she classy? And she said, uh, yes, she is. Well, I know Rosemary personally. <laughs> and the amazing thing about Rosemary is that she will not hold back in a performance, be it a matinee, very much like Spencer, who abhorred all form of reserve. <laughs> <laughs> While she was talking to me, I realized that I just turned and grabbed Kate Hepburn's arm and said, isn't she classy? And Hepburn, uh, you know, while talking, I'm thinking this, so when Hepburn was finished, I said, well, Miss Hepburn, you're no slouch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Catherine went, oh. So anyway, I never looked back, you know. That's great. You were maybe hoping for drinks later? It didn't happen, huh? Drinks or at least a dance, a dance of some sure, form, yeah. a close thing. Uh, now, what do you, uh, what do you, uh, what do you hope for yourself now? Uh, singing is uh, not... singing is over. Yeah. Singing is finished. Um, I would like to keep doing the show. I'd no, actually, I would love to do a Broadway musical. It's something I'd always like to do. Didn't you audition for a a, a play once? Yeah, uh, I, I once. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I, you know, last spring I thought, you know, I'd done a couple of TV series, and I thought, you know, I want to try the real live stage, get to, back to my roots, and I came to New York and I auditioned for the Tempest for the public theater and they said we see Trinculo as Jerry Lewis can you read this as Jerry Lewis and <laughs> I, it wasn't exactly how I so I had to it's not a bush no shrub to bear off any weather at all wow <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they went very good uh -huh. and uh, then I heard a guy go in and I heard Bill Fields coming through so they were uh, looking for a different approach with Shakespeare in the Park that year. I don't know if it opened. Uh, continued success with the SCTV. Uh, the, the big Christmas special is coming up. Yes. Soon, and we'll look forward to that. Thank and you Catherine very much. Catherine O'Hara will be joining that show again. It will be... Terrific. Say, good. say hello to the folks there in I Toronto will. for us. Mr. Martin Short, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back.
Thank you. Uh, we're out of time. I want to thank everybody who was here tonight. Uh, Terry Jones, Carla DeVito, of course, Mr. Martin Short from SCTV, uh, our announcer, Bill Wendell, Paul Schaefer, and the band, and, of course, our wonderful... No, no, we got to go. Uh, have a good weekend. We'll see you Monday. Thank you very much, folks. Good night. Once again, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm overwhelmed. We'll do one more pet trick, okay? And then that's it. We got. Our first guest is one of the funniest men on the planet. Listen to this. Talk about a gig. His one-man show, An Evening with Martin Short, will be at the Mirage Hotel in Las Vegas on May 22nd. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mr. Entertainment, Martin Short. <laughs> Oh, you look fantastic. Once again, thank you so much for being here. You do look tremendous. How have you been and what have you been doing? Well, first of all, before we get to all your prepared texts, let me just say <laughs> one thing yeah. to you. Okay. And I know I've said this before and everyone says, oh, I'm this big phony. You look sensational. <laughs> you do. Oh, I don't think I don't. I don't think so, but thank you. Oh, no, you do, Dave. And I wonder, I mean, are you getting... Younger looking, are you just asking your staff to dim the lighting? I mean, I, I mean, is it the kale enemas? Is that what it is? I'm sorry, the, the kale? The kale enemas. It could be. Did you have your calves implanted? I mean, you're just... Well, it's it, very kind of getting you. No, know, it's just insane. Yeah. I mean, all the stuff. I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I look at you and all, I think to myself, whatever he's doing, 30% more, and he's Angela Lansbury. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And you smell terrific. Really? Yeah, is that Tank Ray or Beef Eater? I, uh, <laughs> well, how about Paul? <laughs> Paul, Paul, is, is, Paul is, who gets custody of Paul? I keep wondering. <laughs> how does that work? Paul will be just fine. <laughs> Paul now looks like the world's hippest back massager. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Back massager, yeah. Really? In air quotes. He goes to the barber and says, I'll have a Brazilian. Yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> Marty. Oh. Some people shampoo their hair. Yeah. He pledges his. Yeah. Ah. He looks, he said one of the rare things in television, rare people, he looks like Kojak and Kojak's lollipop. I and that's, see. that's, ah. that's, that's very unique. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. You've been coming on our show. I have. Uh, for o over 30 years. That's true. Do you, do you remember the, the first uh, appearance? The first was on the old show in NBC. Right. Uh, it was December 3rd, 1982. Mm. And uh, you guys, you were doing more high concept shows <laughs> back then. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were. <laughs> and this, is what, this is what happened. So it was on at 12.30 to 1.30. Yes. And I was on, of course, the very, I was promoting SCTV, but I was the last, last guest. And I was to come on at 20 after 1. And the high concept mm -hmm. that you were doing that night was that um, you would, at 20 after 1, you said, well, that's our show, ladies and gentlemen. 
good night, <laughs> and then you leave, and they rolled all the credits, and the audience is applauding, and you come back out and say, what, you want more? <laughs> and then, all right, we'll bring out one more guest. You know. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it's kind of clever. No. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, everyone I knew turned out, including my wife. No one watched. <laughs> Not one person I knew watched me on the first letter. But, uh, but I was excited. You, now, speaking of SCTV, by God, there was a show, and there was a show. How many years were you part of that? Uh, three years. Three years. Well, that was yeah. funny. But it and was it, was, it was on, the, like, Friday nights? Was that what it we was? We were Friday on? nights at uh, 12.30 to 2 in the morning. Mm -hmm. and, and the cast, again, uh, too numerous to mention, but everybody oh fantastic. John Candy, Eugene oh. Levy, Catherine yes. O'Hara, Andrea Martin, oh, Dave Thomas, God. Rick Moranis. Yes. Wow. Who am I leaving out? It's so horrible when you leave someone out. I know. I'm Tony, sorry. Tony, but... Tony Rosato. Tony Rosato. Tony Rosato, Robin Duke. Robin I mean, Duke. there's a lot of people, but it was fantastic. Um, and, and then uh, you've had uh, been in show business, major league league show was a, a long time like w your first gig like w when you were uh what was the show with tony bennett that you came no no, no i was well, I, I paul actually did the arrangement this is 1974 and it was a show so you're just a kid 1970 i was 24 and oh. i was a kind of a boy singer i i, I remember i'd get um <laughs> i i'd have to but you'd have to pay you i would appear once a week on this show it was on every night everything goes hosted by norm crosby <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, th I remember I, it was a band, and I would just come in and sing a couple of songs, and I'd have to pay for the charts, which cost me $360, and I'd get paid $120. So I was already out <laughs> doing it. And, and I remember I had to follow uh, Tony Bennett, uh, and it was a terrifying thing. He, I, it was a 90-minute show, and he was to open the show, and I was on the last you know, 15 minutes, but there was a snowstorm in Toronto, so they started the show, it was live, and then Tony suddenly arrives, you know, <laughs> and he, he says, yeah, I'm sorry I'm late, I'm ready to sing, forget your troubles, come on, and they said, great, Tony, but why don't we wait till we're on the air, you know, <laughs> and so they get, so Tony gets out, and he's killing, you know, when Joanna left me, every day was summer, and... <laughs> <laughs> and, as, and, and, as, and as Tony is killing upstage, they, not, they, they say, go next. And I say, no, 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 you, you can't follow a singer with a singer. And because, and, you know, that's the rule, one rule of show business. Yes. You don't, there, are, there are other rules. You don't carpool with Suge Knight. Uh, oh, that, that is a rule now. That is a rule of show business. Yeah. You yeah. don't say to Bill Cosby, hey, could you mix my wife a drink? You Hell don't do that. You don't say it. You don't do it. You just don't say it. it is. It's Everyone good. knows it. The rule now. I didn't realize it. You don't, you don't embark on a conversation with Matthew McConaughey without an exit strategy. I mean, these are just... These are, these are rules of thumb day. Rules of show business. You have to have an exit strategy. Yeah, yeah, exit yeah. strategy. I like that is a good so I said, so I said, uh, I said, you can't follow a singer with a singer. Mm -hmm. And they said, watch. And so they, <laughs> they, as Tony's killing upstage, I'm downstage on a stool, and he's, and that's why Chicago's my town, whatever he ended. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's whatever. Why Chicago's, Chicago's my, my place. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then they go to Norm Crosby and says, and he goes, thanks, Tony. Now, here's a kid who really sings good Marty Short. Oh, and man. I'm on a stool, <laughs> and my hand is shaking. No cue cards, frightened. Long hair, kind of a band lawn shirt, nothing works. And I say, well, what a spot following Tony Bennett. And <laughs> nothing. Zero. <laughs> and I start the song, and I'm singing Stevie Wonder's You and I. And I go, here we are, on earth together, it's you and me. And I'm ready, or wrong, it's you and I. <laughs> and when I sing you and me, every lyric flows out of my head. <laughs> and I start then just making up lyrics. <laughs> and subconsciously impersonating Tony Bennett. <laughs> So I'm going, I love, here we are on earth together, it's you and me, our love was made. 
made, it was made in heaven too. I should like to eat some stew. You and I, you and I, you and I. I can't hit the notes. So then I'd go into the bathroom afterwards and I'm throwing cold water on my face. And Tony Bennett comes in. Oh. And I, I, I'm amazed and, I, and I'm expecting him to give me a pearl of wisdom. And he just looks at me and says, You froze good, kid. Good night. <laughs> Off he goes. You froze good. You froze good, kid. This is the kind of thing I will miss. Stories from you. <laughs> that was well, delightful. I can always stop by the house. I wish you would. We'll be right. right back with Martin Short, ladies and gentlemen. That, uh, I don't know if it's the same uh, year, same era, certainly, of... Uh, no, I remember that. That was when I was in Saturday Night Live. From SNL? No, no, no. That, was on, so that picture they just showed yeah. was... Uh, yeah, 84. Was, yeah, now, when was later. Clifford? Clifford was... Not, <laughs> 1990. I was 40 well, when I played a 10-year-old right. you, you, <laughs> you and Charles Grodin. That's right. Uh, and, and I can remember, uh, I had a copy of that, and I took it home, <laughs> and I watched it. I was delighted. I was overwhelmed. I thought, oh, my God, this is from another galaxy. Yeah, look at me like a human boy. That I used to be able to impersonate. I remember working with Charles Grodin in that, and he had just written a book, which I had not read, but I pretended I'd read. And, and every, time, every time he'd start a new story, he'd say, you know, I remember one time I was working, well, it's in the book. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. But I remember the first day we were shooting, you know, I was playing a 10-year-old. It was very important that he was 10, not 13, right. uh, because he had to be prepubescent. So they had said to me, um, "Would you, you have to shave your legs, you know, uh, nair them, put cream, it was a rem hair removal Debilitory. the night before. Yeah. Right. And of course, I forgot to do it. So when we get to the trailer, I'd say, oh, guys, I'm sorry, I forgot. Let's just do it now, and we'll get the makeup done and the hair and thing. Mm -hmm. So, and I had this makeup guy, John Elliott, that I'd done a few films with. So I just, you know, I took off my pants. I was wearing boxer underwear. And I just put my f legs up like this. And there were two women hairdressers, Chris Lee and her assistant, I'd never met before. And, they're, and I'm talking to John Howes, the wife of the kids, and they're nearing my legs. And they're putting cream on it, you know. And then they're, they're getting the, they're taking the, you know, the hair off it. And I'm sitting there in my underwear. And I'm talking to John away. And then they finish. I can hear them washing the towels in the back. And I look back, and my penis is hanging out of my box room. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and I had not, I had not moved an inch. No. I had not moved an inch. First since day I, on the shoot. First day on the shoot. So uh, it took me about. <laughs> It took me about two weeks uh, of nervousness uh, where I finally went up to, to Chris, Christine Lee, the hairdresser. I said, Christine, I, I, I got to ask you something. I said, like Jack, I, I, I got to ask you something. That, that first day when you neared my legs, was my penis hanging out of my boxer underwear? And she said, yeah. And I'll tell you this. If I'd known you then like I know you now, I would have shoved that thing back in. <laughs> Shove that thing back in. Uh, this, this show out in Las Vegas is fantastic, but the show that I want to see is the one that you do periodically around the country with uh, Steve uh, Martin. That yes, must be tremendously entertaining. It is. And, and fun, right? You, you like it Steve? so much fun. I mean, Steve is one of my oldest friends. He's a giant talent. And the main thing that you're amazed at when you're on stage with him is beyond the fact that you're there on stage with... Steve, you just look at him and say, how can any human being who's alive be this pale? <laughs> you know, I looked at him the other night. We were in Detroit, and I looked over, and I said, it looks like there's a, a white hair piece on a urinal. That's what, that's what, <laughs> really. yeah. Ah! Yeah. You don't know whether he's wearing to... makeup or powdered sugar. It's ah, hard to... Ah, you don't know. <laughs> he, he, naked, he looks like an, uh, he's wearing an astronaut suit, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, you get the feeling that when he was born... The doctor said, oh, my God, it's a pillow. You know. <laughs> uh, uh, now, yeah, I, I'm told and I'm hopeful, and we'll see when we come back with Martin Short. <laughs> what does that mean? That's so perfect.
Okay. <laughs> you know, I, um, I, I think I can do this. I don't want to uh, pressure you, and I, I don't want to... Uh, be, but I can, because uh, we have so few sh shows left, and you're always so kind when you come out here with a song, and, and I don't know if you have one for us tonight. Well, I, 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 I actually... Uh, I, I, I do have one, but let me just say... What? Because I would love I do, I do, I do, I do want to say one thing, though, because mm. this is like, you know, I've been on this show for uh, over 50 times, 51, right. 52 yeah. times, and uh, I, I want to just thank you for allowing me to promote all the things that rarely opened or worked, but still, that's a different, <laughs> it's a whole different conversation. <laughs> and, uh, but I do think it's a testament to you, Dave, uh, uh, of how hard all the people with any merit were wanted to work. You know, like, we were talking with Steve before. Steve, through the years, Martin, has phoned me up and will say, uh, t t tell me if you think this joke is funny. And I'll pretend it is. And, <laughs> and, but then I'll say, what, what is this for? And he said, well, I got Letterman in three months. Mm, yeah, three months, wow. No, really, and that is, beca and, and it's, I think it's, uh, it kind of, so I want to thank you and your staff and the writers. And the well, and it like goes Paul the other Schaefer. way around because people like yourself and like Steve Martin, and Bill Murray and Tom Hanks and on and on and on have been so uh, great for us and, and really invested their time I, and, 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 and I agree with that, but I think that you set that tone right off the gate with very high standard of comedy and broadcasting, which made us want to work very hard to, to pull well, that you're, Well, you're very sweet to say that. Yeah. But... How about a song? But more importantly, about a song. <laughs> And again, I'm happy to do a song. Oh, that would be if lovely. You'd like yeah, me oh, to. Yeah. <laughs> you were startled. I was startled. <laughs> yeah, that's it's Ed Wynn. About no room. I mean, really. That... Should I do it right to you yes, on your? Yes, right here on the desk. I draw. <laughs> I'm not gonna. And if it falls, and if it falls out, I'm gonna shove it right back <laughs> in. Well, because talk is cheap, I'm doing it over there. Okay, okay. fine, thank you. <laughs> you know, in my business, or in our business, or oh, thank in, you. of course, although in your case, that's not for long days. No, not for yeah. long, no. <laughs> An event as momentous as Dave Letterman's retirement is rare. So it's important I pay tribute in the only way performers do by making it about me. <laughs> you know, I've had this number prepared for some time. To be honest, Dave, I wrote it for your funeral. <laughs> it's true. Sure, we're about the same age, but I always figured, you know, I'd outlive you because of your... <laughs> but I decided to do your funeral number tonight, since I probably want to attend your funeral now, because, well, I, unless, of course, I have something to promote, and then I That's will. Sure you want to be there for that. <laughs> and this is going to get a little tricky for me oh, no. to get through. Stupid emotions. So, let's just uh, um, give it a try, shall we, Paul? And wish me luck in the top note, Pat. you go say goodbye to David the guy we laughed at from our beds how we we'll miss his top ten lists now that he is dead just lay his coffin in the ground And play us one last glass crash sound Davis skipped his last rehearsal He won't be back after the next commercial You're at peace now, Pappy 
a guest with shows to shill You'll never have to fake a laugh At jokes from Dr. Phil Or Bill O'Reilly yakking about the factor For 30 years Dave never cared for actors Serene and calm now that he's been embalmed Never look better Dave, let a man Ah, how Dave lived past 60 is a miracle to me He smoked cigars and sped in cars Hello, Delhi. He lived through dog attacks and Jack Hannah's Cobra. Somehow the guy survived the feud with Oprah. It's the end. My pretend showbiz friend. Farewell. We'll meet again someday. God bless you. God Thank bless you, you for everything. Thank you for everything. The wonderful Paul Marty Short, everybody. Yeah.